Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for Craig Smokes Off the Radar. Brought to you by Pickup Outfitters. Since 1997, we've been outfitting trucks, SUVs, and vans at 220 Lake Air Drive or createacommotion.com. All right, welcome back into Sikkim 365 Radio. Time for a little Off the Radar, which is taking a look at some of the stories around the rest of the world of sports outside of college football. Although, still stories from college football, as I'll get to in just a moment. But the main ones that we don't quite spend a lot of time on, or the Dallas Cowboys, typically refrain from mentioning them too much in this segment. But uh, we will start off with some college football. One thing that uh, TCU's athletic director, Jeremiah Donati, mentioned in regards to the Gary Patterson uh, search uh, search for his replacement, I should say, is uh, LaDainian Tomlinson will be on the uh, committee that helps find the new TCU head football coach. Uh, he said, I can't wait to hear their thoughts and their ideas that they have. He was talking about, um, obviously, LaDainian, the TCU legend, a Central Texas legend, grew up here in Waco, but also uh, Joe Briggs uh, will be a part of the, the committee uh, search committee as well. So uh, I'm very curious to see what they do, man. You know, there's the, the Sonny Dykes option and there's the Jeff Trailer option, I guess, still, if they, if they feel like they could maybe convince mm. him, um, you know, as, as sure as he sounds as he's going to be staying in San Antonio. But, you know, once you get past that, I really am intrigued by, do they stick to the whole, your look, like you would rather have a head coach? Because then that would eliminate a Joey McGuire mm. or even a Jeff Grimes or, you know, any other ne- number of guys you want to mention. But I said in my, my article uh, today on the website that uh, Baylor fans just better get used to the idea that everyone, including their head coach, is going to be in the rumor mill uh, for – for this off season and probably for many off seasons beyond, because you'd love to keep them all together, but I mean between McGuire and Grimes and Aranda, I mean alone, uh, there's going to be a lot of outside interest. So very curious uh, the direction that uh, TCU goes. But LT will be on that uh, on that board of trustees committee that will be looking for the new head coach. Another college football note today: Clay Helton already has a new job. Did you know yeah, that? I did. Georgia Southern hires Clay Helton to be their new head coach. And um, obviously he comes over from USC where he was fired just a few weeks back. And um, you saw the writing on the wall there. USC now is, is one of the more intriguing schools as far as what direction they're going to go. But uh, Georgia Southern goes the direction of Clay Helton. And what? I saw some comments of like, oh, hey, you know, obviously a name some people recognize, but saw a lot of other like, well, that's uninspired comments as well. well. I, didn't, I, I mean, if you're Georgia Southern, you get the guy who's at USC. I mean, no matter how well he did, I mean, that's, I think that's a, I think that's a, I don't know if it's a home run hire for Georgia Southern. I don't know what they expect. They had a big win over Florida a couple of years ago, if people remember. But um, I, uh, I think that's good. I mean, I think that's good. I think Clay Helton will do well there. I think Clay Helton's problem is that he was, I don't want to say he's too nice a guy, but he was too nice a guy for LA. He wasn't Hollywood enough for LA. Mm-hmm. I think he'll do fine at Georgia Southern. I think there's many places where Clay Helton will be a very effective head coach. I don't know if Clay Helton was a guy who was ever going to win national championships, but very few people are. That doesn't mean that they're not good head coaches for your program. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think being at a smaller school probably will be uh, better for him. Uh, He's replacing Chad Lunsford. Lunsford was fired back on September 26th. Uh, as they had gotten off to a one and three start, uh, the deals for five seasons, nearly eight hundred thousand per year. Pete Thamel had that part of the report, and he's going to get started right away. Basically, mm-hmm. getting to recruiting and you know start putting his staff together. So uh, good for Clay Helton that uh, he is uh, now back in the mix. And what's interesting about this is he's going to be in the Sun Belt, but. Like there's so much chaos going on in, in conference realignment, and you know the Sun Belt looks like they're actually going to be one of the ones that makes it out okay. But it has led to, you know, obviously Conference USA being in a bit of a pickle, and there are the reports swirling out there that uh, they're going to be grabbing some new members and Liberty, a part of that mix, New Mexico State, a part of that mix, Jacksonville State, and Sam Houston State reported yesterday by the Action Network, that they were all likely to be joining uh, Conference USA as all sports members. and um, Sam Houston State was just about to join a new conference, weren't they? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, but Conference USA is looking to uh, add four new members. So it's interesting that S- uh, Sam Houston State will be bumping up a level, and I, I suppose uh, you know Liberty no longer independent. Go down the line of what this means for, for all of those teams, but – uh, they're trying, man, and apparently they are still on the search for one more because you don't want to have an odd number of teams. So uh, they've lost 
11 of the 14 members. So you'd have three remaining teams. You add these four, and they will be on the lookout for an eighth. And I, I don't know. There may have been already some discussion on who that might be. Uh, I have not dug that far into it, but apparently Conference USA is – is uh, looking for one more to give it a nice round number. But uh, what do you think of that new conference? I've seen a lot of people who seem to think that Liberty is going to become like the Alabama of the non-Power Fives. I, I, well, I mean, they have resources. I mean, they have, That's they why. have resources. Yeah. So, and they'll yeah. hire Hugh Freeze. Well, yeah. I mean, why the yeah, hell when, not, he, you know? when Hugh Freeze leaves and goes and he, you know, used car salesman's his way into a, another job, uh, then – yeah, I, I know that's They'll harsh, go hire another big name they'll, tarnished they'll coach. Go do it, that, yeah, that, yeah they, 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 you know, everybody expected them to hire Art Bryles, and, and they didn't. They hired Hugh Freeze instead. So, like, yeah, they, they don't care. They'll hire anybody. I mean, and I'm not saying that those guys are unhirable, even, but it's just for what other schools may hesitate at, they will full bore go into and not care one iota. So, yeah, yeah they will always have a head coach that is going to be, you know, a name guy, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the, the, I think they will be. And, well, I mean, if you're talking about an eight team league, it's not going to be that hard to to win it for anybody if they get really good for a, a good a good stretch, especially teams that you know are um, you know are moving up. And I'll tell you this though, Sam Houston State's been good for a long time, so it wouldn't surprise me to to see them be successful in that league relatively quickly. Yeah. And they live in the transfer portal as it is, so that just means there there might be some bigger fish in that transfer portal they can grab. Yeah, potentially. So we'll see uh, as that shakes out and all the uh, ink dries on on who's going to be where. And but it looks like uh, Conference USA has been able to replenish and uh, also maybe looking for another team. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Nothing to report on, you know, any other expansion really going on at this point. It's it's kind of uh, settled down as these. Uh, the you know the the Sun Belts and the Conference USA's of the world are like just having to react to what happened above them in the Big Twelve and with the SEC, and then once they get settled in, you know it might be time for the Big Twelve to announce its intentions one way or the other on whether they're going to go with a wave two, as we've talked about at length, or if they're going to you know potentially stay pat. Although I lean more towards a, a wave two at this point uh, in time, just based on everything that that we've been hearing. Uh, all right, elsewhere, uh, Scotty Pippen's upset about the Last Dance. You know, that came out yeah. a while ago. But uh, Scottie Pippen was in the news today, uh, and he was mad at Michael Jordan. Uh, he was uh, talking about the documentary, and this was an excerpt from uh, his book that's going to be coming out. The book is called Unguarded, and uh, it's, a, it's a memoir. And in the book, there's a, a passage in which he talks about the Last Dance documentary. And here's the excerpt. The final two episodes, and, and this is via GQ, I guess, is preview in the, the book. The final two episodes aired on May 17. Similar to the previous eight, they glorified Michael Jordan while not giving nearly enough praise to me and my proud teammates. Michael deserved a large portion of the blame. The producers had granted him editorial control of the final product. The doc couldn't have been released otherwise. He was the leading man and the director. Except Michael was determined to prove to the current generation of fans that he was larger than life during his day and still larger than LeBron James, the player many consider his equal if not superior. Even in the second episode, while, which focused for a while on my difficult upbringing and unlikely path to the NBA, the narrative returned to MJ and his determination to win. I was nothing more than a prop. His best teammate of all time, he called me. He couldn't have been more condescending if he tried. Each episode was the same. Michael on a pedestal, his teammates secondary, smaller, the message no different from when he referred to us back then as his supporting cast. From one season to the next, we received little or no credit whenever we won, but the bulk of criticism when we lost. Michael could shoot 6 of 24 from the field, commit five turnovers, and he was still in the minds of the adoring press and public, the airless Jordan. Now here I was in my mid-50s, 17 years since my final game, watching us being demeaned once again, living through it the first time was insulting enough. So, juicy book excerpt from Scottie Pippen and uh, a little – unhappiness with Michael Jordan and uh, the portrayal of the Bulls in the last dance documentary. Yeah, he was not portrayed well in those last couple episodes because of his holdout. Yes. And um, I can see that if you were one of Michael Jordan's old teammates, you would not like that because, you know, the, the, but the last, last dance was Michael Jordan's perspective on things. Mm -hmm. And from Michael Jordan's perspective, he was pissed off that Scottie Pippen was holding out as long as he did. Mm -hmm. And in that last run, the Bulls, were I mean that that whole season until he got back they were they were losing games that they normally would have won he was 
And what Michael was, I think I took from it was it showed how, how important Scotty was to the overall thing. Mm -hmm. And Michael thought Scotty was being selfish because M Michael was under the gun too, because Jerry Krause had pretty much said he was blowing the thing up, which to this day, no one will understand. Right. right. No one will understand why they did that or why they, they wanted to push it to that point and not just, you know, I get there's money and all those things, but Jerry Krause had kind of decided he was you know, looking long-term and this wasn't sustainable and he was going to, you know, blow it up for financial reasons. And so they were all under it. And I think, I don't think Michael, I don't think Michael cares what Scotty thinks. That's clear. No, and, he doesn't care know. what anybody thinks. Yeah, so uh, blank them kids. I, I, <laughs> you know uh, the meme. Yeah. I, I also tell you this. I don't know if Michael Jordan was really too friends with too many people in the sense of you can be friends with Michael Jordan. Yeah, I think Michael I mean, Jordan has about four friends. Barkley. And even him, they've had their yeah, ups they've and had downs. falling outs. But yeah. yeah, I mean, he's 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 one of a kind man. And and one thing that you know you can give, I, I think this is more emotions than anything else. But Scotty did make mention that Michael Jordan received ten million dollars to appear in the documentary. How much do you think everybody else earned? Nada. Yeah. yeah, he got ten million. But hey, he's Michael. You can't do the documentary without Michael Jordan. No. Like you just can't. I mean, that's. You can't talk about those Bull team, Bulls teams without talking about Michael Jordan. That that was the man. And Pippen uh, did also say Michael was bigger than the game. Even uh, my initial arrival in Chicago, he's a big, iconic figure for the NBA. So we never really had that off-the-court relationship. So to your point, yeah, Michael and, and Scotty weren't even much of friends uh, off the court. But uh, given his personality, that's not – that's surprising. All right, uh, tonight got uh, a few college football games that are going on, but we also got the World Series, Game 6, Braves leading the series, three games to two. Houston got the big win in game number five. And uh, tonight we're back in Houston, and how are you uh, viewing this contest coming up? Uh, what do you think, Braves and Astros? Uh, I actually think the Braves win it tonight. I don't, I don't like Luis Garcia on short rest. But, I mean, th this – uh, I was talking to our friend Chris Allman, a huge Astros fan, yesterday, and uh, I am not. I He's dead to me, by the way. <laughs> Wrestling, just in general, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. mostly that. Though. Yeah, but uh, so Chris Allman, we were talking to him. I was talking to him yesterday, and he said, you know, as an Astros fan, it's it's nerve wracking. And I, he asked me what my prediction was. I said, of all the predictions I've ever made in my sports talk radio career, and I'm not a big prediction on this is exactly how it's going to go. I have maybe five and 15, 16 years of doing this that really laid out. But this is series has gone exactly as I thought it was. It's been weird. There's no starting pitching depth. So there's no one, <laughs> there is no stopper in this series at all that you can go, okay, this guy's going to pitch and he's going to be absolutely nails. And he's just not because there's, you know, Verlander for the Astros has been out all year. Lance McCullers, their best pitchers all year. He's out for the series. You know, Charlie Morton got hurt in, the, in game one. <laughs> Man, so, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so there's all these things that have happened. There's, there's nobody that you look to. And usually in a World Series, you know, what you try to avoid or try to beat, if you can get, if you can win a game when the team's ace plays, like when the Astros beat Clayton Kershaw, we know how they did it, but just. Just on the surface, you can beat Clayton Kershaw. Then you've got to – that's something. When, you know, the Braves beat Max Scherzer. I mean, that's a huge deal. When you get over on the ace, well, there's no aces. So it's just now this smorgasbord of, of pitchers trying to get outs. And, yeah, Luis Garcia on short rest, I don't like. I think the Braves take it tonight, although back in Houston, stuff can stuff probably going to continue to get weird. And, and I kind of do hope we see a seventh game. <laughs> yep. So uh, tonight it'll be game number six. Uh, Atlanta again leads that series three games to two. Game's on Fox, and it'll start just after 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, do you want me to wrap up here? Do we no, have, you go. Okay. Uh, how about this? Uh, you know, Kobe Bryant, his, his late widow, Vanessa, has been in the news a lot just with the settlements and things that they're kind of working through with L.A. County and, you know, the big story about how apparently some of those emergency workers were taking picture of, you know, dead bodies uh, after the helicopter crash and she sued and there's been that whole uh, to do as well uh, but another story coming out of the Kobe Bryant estate um, he was one of the first big athletes to uh, chip in an investment on uh, body armor do you drink body armor you're more of a Gatorade guy I'm more of a, I'm actually now a vitamin water guy okay. vitamin water zero sugar that's that's my that's my jam by the way vitamin water zero sugar if you see this <laughs> hit, hit your boy up body water I will definitely be a uh, spokesperson for you I, I like body armor it's uh it's good stuff but mm -hmm. back in 2014 uh, he purchased a 10% stake in the company 
for six million dollars. Well, now what happens with these drink brands? The bigger drink brands come and buy them, mm-hmm. and who is that usually? It's Pepsi or it's Coke, and in the case of Body Armor, Coca Cola has decided to purchase uh, the Body Armor brand, valuation of eight billion dollars. So as a result of Kobe Bryant's 2014 10% $6 million investment in the Body Armor brand, as a result of their valuation, his estate will receive $400 million. So he flipped $6 million into $400 million. And uh, the estates can, you know, obviously they'd rather have the alternative of having Kobe around, but uh, they're taken care of. They already were, but I mean, golly, $400 million off that one investment alone. That, that's one investment he made. You can only imagine all the others as well. Yeah, a good good on the on the Bryant family. Good good for them. I mean, yeah. again, they weren't struggling anyway. And, um, you know, I hope ex- Vanessa Bryant does some good things with that money because she seems to have had kind of taken up that mission. Yeah, and, and so. I just think it's cool to see that that brand grew like that. I mean, that you make that it's small. It's good. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it too. You make that smaller investment, even though six million dollars obviously isn't small, and you turn that into four hundred million dollars. That is, yeah. pretty but, pretty good well, stuff. Well, here's the deal. Uh, we're talking to the same. I said vitamin water zero, which was you, vitamin water, which used to be fifty cent had the yeah, the, and he made a bunch of money off that. Uh, you said Body Armor. Uh, they're both owned now. By Coca-Cola. Oh, good. So, and listen, Craig's favorite beverage is Diet Coke. So, Coca-Cola. I've been to Atlanta. Yeah, we've been. Sponsored the show. We've been. I've been to the museum. I haven't just been to Atlanta. I've been to real-ass Atlanta. Yeah. We stayed there for days and made it out just fine. Again, we're big fans of the ATL. You just heard me say I think the Braves are going to win. Come on, Coke. We spent nights in Bankhead. Yeah, I mean we did, and uh, and we and we we did just fine. Even though I definitely saw that neighborhood in the first forty eight, like three days after I got back. Listen, Coke, I understand that your next pitch man or person is going to be like a pop star, like Justin Bieber or or you know Taylor Swift or someone like that. I get that that's what you want, but I'm telling you right now, you have no more loyal brand ambassadors than the three people that sit oh, here. Yeah, for sure. Than we would be for Coca Cola. Yeah, no doubt. All right, I'll wrap it up with this. So we got the World Series going on tonight, but there also are some college football games. There is a, a trio of games. Matter of fact, unfortunately, they're not back to back to back. They're all starting about the same time, but kicking off first at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time uh, will be Ball State and Akron. Uh, then at 6 30, got Miami of Ohio and Ohio. And uh, that's you know, Ohio, man, one and seven. That's, that's not going to be a great game, probably. And then at 6 30, uh, Eastern Michigan and Toledo. So we got some action on a Tuesday night, uh, mm-hmm. the way that it should be, and a trio of games. Um, and the World Series and, you know, NBA and all sorts of other stuff as well. So there's a few stories that are off 